Hey friends, welcome back. My name is Grace and this is the Intuitive Lens YouTube channel where I talk about the collective energies for each week and we do a little tarot card reading to go along with it. Let's go ahead and get started. We're talking about the last week of July, July 24th through the 30th. Um, if you keep up with astrology even a little bit, you know that there's a lot going on right now. We just had the Venus enter its retrograde it's in Leo. We also just entered Leo season. So collectively, our fifth house is very activated. Fifth house and first house. Actually, I'm going to call out four houses right now and go ahead and check out those houses in your chart. If you have a chart um, that you use and want to dive a little bit deeper on your own, but essentially the first and seventh house is activated. Why? Aries and Libra nodes. Pluto makes a square transit with the nodes on Sunday, the 23rd. And remember, Pluto is the planet of like transformation, evolution, um, rules the death card. It's scorpionic, which by the way, our first quarter moon is in Libra for a very short amount of time until it, and then it goes into a Scorpio moon. Um, and that's this week as well, first quarter. First quarter moon energy this week is planting seeds, learning what you have, what you can, what you must to move forward, putting things together. And that's supported also by this weekend is Sag moon into Capricorn moon weekend. So think of ninth house, 10th house, what are your dreams and aspirations? More so than that, what do your dreams and aspirations feel like? And Capricorn Moon Weekend is sort of like, make it a real thing. Start building it. Start building the dream. But I digress because I want to call it four houses. First house, seventh house. That's me versus we, the collective, like us, relating. Where do you start and end and where does another person begin and end? understanding the ways we come together in order to honor what is sacred about ourselves all right this is we're going to be learning a lot of code uh, how to be interdependent and no longer codependent okay as well as because leo is here and pluto is moving into aquarius but we're sort of backtracking right now in a retrograde through capricorn again but for the next 20 years starting in january it'll be in aquarius again think of it right now we're seeing that axis highlighted as well the fifth and eleventh houses fifth house of self-expression creativity love play romance passion and eleventh house shared humanity uh activism um doing things for the greater good, innovation. So again, we see sort of like this idea of where am I and where am I in relationship to much larger things? Am I participating? Am I, you know, sir, seventh house is also Virgo. So, well, yeah, right. It's no, no, sorry. Sixth house is Virgo, but I'm getting sort of Virgo energy right now. It's like, am I serving so much that I am myself am lost or am I just lost? I think there's a lot going to be a lot of calling into your own self, like your own being and that leading to the next thing of like, now I can take this and relate to other people better or Maybe not better, but just relating to peop to different people that need to come into your life. So this week definitely feels very, um, I don't want to say karmic, but fated. Because the nodes are super activated right now. Venus retrograde is uh, restructuring, reimagining everything that we think of when we think of Venus. Love, beauty, abundance, our wealth even. And yeah, Pluto in the nodes is, is, is feeling very, that, that transit is feeling very faded and, and kind of karmic in the sense that if it, it's called the, the missed step 
transit. Not like spiritual bypassing, but more like, okay, you're getting it, you're getting to where you're going, but one vital thing has been missed. That's sort of like the misstep transit. So if there's anything that has been overlooked, it will come to your attention now. Yeah? Uh, what else do we have? Mercury transit with Venus. This is charming, poetic, pleasant energy. Mercury enters Virgo. Rational thinking, methodical, practical approach. Yeah, this weekend for sure. I think some clarity coming in. Some understanding of what your path, where your path is leading you and what you got to do about it more or less spend the spend this weekend getting your thoughts organized really feeling into what does my desired life feel like doing those things that i desire and just do what you can to get yourself there yeah in that emotional space we are still in this like new moon cancer manifesting energy it's very important for you to be thinking about what you're attracting with your emotions and your thoughts. Uh, Mercury moving into Virgo is an exalted position. So how long is Mercury in an assign for? Uh, like a month or uh, a month or two? Probably a month or so. Six weeks maybe? Don't quote me on that because I, I did not write it down. But for the duration that Mercury is in Virgo in its exalted position, we can be getting a lot of information and this could be also the energy of, hey, let me say something about what I am channeling, what I am getting downloads of. This is very communicative. This is very organized. It's rational. But I will say also because Mercury goes into retrograde at the end of next month and Venus is retrograde, we're, we're basically in a succession entering a lot of retrogrades because Saturn and Pluto are also retrograde right now. This is not a time for big decisions. So even though clarity may come, this is, these are all just stepping stones along the path of where you're going. This isn't an energy of like, let's commit to this and everything all at once. It's just, the center, you know, try to be present as much as possible. Presence also means that you can tap into how you're feeling moment to moment and get a lot of information from those things. For example, how do certain people make you feel being around them? How do certain situations make you feel doing different activities? Leo season wants us to find our joy. We want to find our, um, our inner child play more, have more fun, not take things too seriously, and just be tender too, because Leo is the heart space. If you watch my channel, you know I say this often enough, to so take your thoughts and put them in your heart. The heart is connected to the hands, to the, hand, to the arms and the hands. So what's in your heart is what we do in life, is how we how we do and what we do. The mind, not so much. The mind just the mind just thinks. It's the heart that moves. And it's our mind that stops our hearts from moving, right? Sometimes. Sometimes. This is the time to learn to trust what's in your heart. Trust what's in your heart. All right, let's get some cards out for a reading. All right, let's start with some tarot messages here. Whoa, oh my God. They're jumping. They're jumping out everywhere. We have the Page of Wands, the Magician, crossed by the Six of Pentacles. Okay, so it looks like you're manifesting something more balanced, more fair. There's this energy of generosity. There's abundance, right? Because when, when we're generous, we're abundant. Generous with our thoughts generous with our resources there is enough to go around or do you have scarcity mindset if so it looks like you're moving away from that and starting to just align more with um, 
that there is enough, that I, will, that I will have what I need when I need it, that something will show up when I ask for it, when I say that I want it, or when I need it. And the Page of Wands, the Page of Wands, this is a card that shows up when somebody is beginning their spiritual path. They're um, heading out on an adventure. This is the beginning of an idea. This is um, an inspiration. This person doesn't have all of the experience. Maybe this is you or somebody you're dealing with. This person doesn't have all their all the experience yet, but they have enough of an idea that uses their passion, their their fire energy, their spirit. They're passionate about something enough to move forward. And at this time that I say that, we have the Knight of Page, <laughs> the Knight of Page. And when I say that, the Knight of Wands also shows up underneath. So yeah, we are moving forward passionately. Hello, Leo season. Justice in reverse, that's Libra, South Node. Knight of Swords in reverse, Ace of Pentacles in reverse. Oh. So if this is about this missed step that I was talking about earlier, that South Node Libra is about the past. It's about, it is sort of, the South Node is at the same time our karmic past, like what we bring with us, where we, we're we coming from. So in some ways it's sort of, it could be seen as like our expertise or our, what we know and what we're familiar with, whether it's comfort zone or just, right, what, what, we, always, what we already have with us. Libra is that sort of very um, charming, we have a lot of this charming energy this week, the first quarter moon's in Libra. So just think about what misstep, okay, this is making, this is making sense. What are you missing in moments and situations or relationships where you're choosing to be charming, you're choosing that people pleasing Libra energy, the pleasant trees over sort of striking something out because it's showing up here, the Ace of Pentacles in reverse, this missed opportunity, or not, let's not say missed opportunity, but this missed step, this missing step um, is when something has been left unaccounted for. So where are you leaving yourself behind, like your own soul fragments behind? Where are you, you know, I don't mean it with such intensity, but just take it how it resonates. Where are you betraying yourself in order to keep the peace or for example, desire is a big theme with, with Venus retrograde. We may be forgetting ourselves a little bit. Like what you want is not necessarily what somebody else wants. There's something here about sort of like self sabotage or betrayal when you are um, one way or the other. I'm imagining energetically you are outside of yourself. You're either giving it away in order to please others in some way, right? You're not serving yourself first. And in other ways, it could be, this feels like it's, um, you're outside yourself. You don't even see how you're leaving yourself behind by putting so much energy into something outside yourself. Um, this could be fantastical a little bit. So why is that magician crossed with the six of wands? Maybe it's saying that in order to advance on your spiritual journey, there needs to be more balance in the way that you're manifesting. Balance between perhaps the spiritual and the mundane. Let's keep going. I'm just going to keep shuffling this way. Their cards are falling out very fast. Let's keep going. Nine, uh, eight of Wands, you know what that means. Messages, but I also see, yeah, something is stuck. Are you feeling stuck? What is the stuck? Uh-oh. The Wheel of Fortune and the Five of Pentacles underneath. So, like I was saying at the beginning, some sort of scarcity mindset is what we're working past. I feel like this is the time to be doing it, absolutely. There's never a time, there's never a wrong time to go back to this lesson. 
of where are we not speaking up for our own needs? There's something here about vulnerability with this five of pentacles. You know, there's two people on that card because they're not alone. And I think that we find ourselves feeling alone a lot of the times when going along our spiritual path. And there's definitely times when that is the work. I don't feel that the work is that right now, necessarily. I feel like it's both. The nodal axis of Aries and Libra, it's calling us to stand within ourselves, within our own bodies, within our own minds, in the context of others. It's like that balance. So are you manifesting from a place of, I want this, this is for me, um, me, me, me? Or are you too far on the other side to be like, I really want what's best for everyone, why can't we all get along, and you're forgetting yourself? There's that. King of Wands. First upright card to show up, the King of Wands. Influence. So some very powerful figure, I think, jumps in. Somebody who's going to be very important for you is going to focus. Somebody very influential is going to step in here or up here. But when, I think by, by divine timing, the Wheel of Fortune is in the center with the Five of Pentacles, I think they're going to step in to, sh I think this might be somebody who to help you, influence you or show you how to manifest better. Somebody you can model or, um, or maybe it's a fire sign. A few more cards, please. Yeah, Eight of Swords. Mental entrapments. We're, we got to get out of our minds. Get out of your mind and into your body. That Ace of Swords shows up. Yes. The truth. Get out of your mind and into your body. Ace of Swords is clarity. We have known for some time that clarity is coming in. And I just want to remind you that, you know, my advice would not be to make would be to not make any big decisions right now but be like an investigator and a detective in your own life see what information what pieces are fitting together and see what feels good i think that you know i'm really influenced by like a book i'm reading right now called pleasure activism by adrian marie brown there's a lot for us to learn about how we can enjoy our lives more it, as much as in the simple things and being joyous um, and experiencing pleasure um, within the mundane. But then you know, the book goes on to talk about society change and transformative justice and more things, more and more and more things. But just the premise of this, cl this clarity that comes in wants us to feel joyful. This is, we're entering Leo season, this is fifth house activation. What is stopping us from allowing ourselves to experience just 10% more joy each day? Just can you extract, even in any moment, 10% more joy, more happiness? You yourself can do that without changing a thing around you. You can choose that. You can choose 10% more happiness. Looks what what cuts at the bottom when I say that. Ten of Pentacles. Sorry, Ten of Cups. Is it gonna focus? It's so slow. The Ten of Cups is happiness. The Ten of Cups is saying, I don't care what's going on around me, I choose happiness. I'm ha I'm choosing to be happy with whoever is here right now for me. I'm choosing to be happy. And we, we are happy together. This isn't just like a pie in the sky sort of like, yeah, everything's good. This is choosing to see good. Final card, three of pentacles. Remember that you're worthy just the way that you are, okay? Everyone has something valuable to offer. We're, we're all building something that is beyond us, always. That is constantly true. If you're focused on the little details, as Virgo may have us do it, <laughs> we can be very critical of ourselves and of others. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. 
The Wheel of Fortune sometimes asks the question, why? Why are you asking this question? Why do you care about this? What do you need to know? Can some things remain unknown? Can you allow yourself to flow in the journey of life? I'm going to say no, because I don't see any cups here. I know that the, the, the Ten of Cups showed underneath, but there's no water here. And maybe it's because we just left Cancer season for Leo, and Leo is, I mean, Leo's so hot, it's just evaporating. So there's just steam right now. Anyway, oh, and the Ten of Swords underneath as we end the reading. You know, the end of a destructive cycle. Something um, is getting put to an end. This is calling for rejuvenation. So take good care of yourself as time transitions, transitions us into a new period of time, for sure. Um, I'm going to leave it there. If you have any questions about astrology, your natal chart, um, tarot readings, anything like that, go ahead and message me, leave a comment, like the video, subscribe, and don't forget that there is a recommended listening in the description box below that I will put there every single week because I love music and I love to jam out, so if this is reading vibes with you, you want to just give a little listen, highly recommend checking out that link. Okay, I will see you next time. Thanks, y'all.